Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Turtle Island News with Tracy Kennedy, live today, of course, on turtleislandnews.info. You can get um, my news articles there. So, I did a little intel, like I was asked, this morning, and spoke to the soldiers that are here. I was right, they are American. So I saw them on... um, just going for coffee in the morning and they said they're here for a training exercise which happens quite a bit they come up here for um, wetland training and stuff they didn't say they didn't sound or feel ominous at all they're just men doing what they're told to do the other part of what I saw this morning So I'm walking down the street, and I saw a cloaked figure, which is odd for walking down a friggin' street, and I realized later no one else saw him. Something I have to tell you guys about um, the Green Man. He is in all our cultures all over the world. I have an image for you, if you want to look at a picture. We have been told quite a few lies, which I think we all all know about. And we've gone over how our history was stolen and rewritten around 500 years ago, everywhere. I have a picture up of Persades of Cyrus, who was the teacher of Pythagoras in the way they want to show us him. And it's kind of the blind leading the blind. But I have a slight a slight correction here. Because this is Saturn. And Saturn was never seen or perceived as white, nor was he bearded by the ancients, but rather dark, melanated, to the point of being green. He is a chief Naga, or Negus, like Min the Cedar. As this is the al Kebulan tradition, the name later changed to Africa. It also relates to our image of Cain, which we will go into another time. But in addition, Cain, who was a Hamite, was also known to be dark, as all Hemets were described. He is more like the image that we've seen of Scar of the Lion King series. Only in modern times do we find all of these primordial archetypes getting a makeover. Only in these times. And this is not a racial matter. It is simply a matter of truth. One should ask themselves why it is so necessary for a zero to be switched to a one, except to confuse all of us, no matter what color, race, creed we have been born into. If Tesla was teaching electrical current, why on earth would we listen to J.P. Morgan? If the originator of certain systems that the world functions on until this day are still present, still alive. Why not listen to them instead of the imposters and those who have sought to steal and claim wisdom while engaging in the acts that show that they are completely foolish? Again, this is what JP did to Tesla. And it's easy for us to say, well, that's wrong when examining the situation, of course. And when looking at it that way, but not so easy when we're talking about who designed the building blocks of the reality that we now call home. So rather than blaming any of these forces for the disaster befalling us, we need only to accredit that 
to those of the corruption of knowledge itself and those who continue to bring about for reasons of wanting very misplaced reverence. If you make a negative force all of a sudden positive then nobody knows what place to put in their internal alchemy. This is the inner world re-engineering as the only blueprint to life is to know that they are diametrically opposed and opposing forces and their positions while they orbit in order to stay in balance and in harmony thus nullifying their effects these are the immortals we are the immortals and they can earn it or it can be easily taken away that's why religious institutions of modern times will be crushed by the unfathomable truth it is fathoms deep and we can feel that in our souls but these beings have no connection to the origin point and cannot offer anything beyond faith belief and hope but nothing tangible no adept would accept such a thing and that's why you find so few of them because the modern institutions of esoteric learning are still building their temples on a foundation of lies. Thus, we make necessary actions to end these lies. One issue, the accelerator physicists remain cautiously aware of. One of the scientists said it this way, that they have found an unidentified lying object interesting words in the beam pipe of the LHC's 17 mile underground tunnel this is a big deal because the pipe is a sealed vacuum it's impossible to know what the object is that's what they say so just when you think things couldn't get any more strange at CERN. I bring you this story. That has left me somewhat scratching my head. A small thing, like a mysterious UFO object to not concern yourself with, I guess. Now, a more in-depth discussion on the CERN anomaly took place a couple weeks ago and a discussion that is pretty darn fascinating there are ideas as to what this thing is but the top physicist Robert D. Roick interesting name member at CERN professor at the University of Belgium and U.S. Davis, California. D. Roark is a leading scientist on CMS, one of the Large Hadron Collider's key experiments, reported the following. So this is his words. It will take only one significant deviation in the data to change everything. The upgraded machine works. Now we have to get the real operation for physics. But work remains to be done. One issue the accelerator physicists are aware of is an unidentified lying object in the beam of this tunnel. An unidentified lying object. What on earth? <laughs> or some interdimensional version of this earth does that actually mean well they don't know that's right people a mysterious object 
just manifested itself out of a vacuum. They don't know what it is, and it seems nor do they care, because the heroic goes on saying this. This unidentified lying object turns out not to be a problem for the operation. It's just something to keep an eye on. It's in the vacuum tube. It's not a problem if it doesn't move and remain stable. Ironic that he says something to keep an eye on when in reality that is not only impossible but would have profound effects on a quantum level. For you see, the mere observation of this object will collapse it into reality. Whereas by removing all observation, the scientists are allowing for something known as supersymmetry, superposition. So simple terms. If that is possible, what this means is this object, there's some of them are calling it a UFO, which means it is probably peopled or at least beinged, right? while remaining sealed in the vacuum in a pipe free from prying eyes is able to be in a state where it's both here and in another dimension. Is this the beginning of a transfer of information between our dimension and the next which they said they wanted to do? This is about the quantum computing and computers and the global mind, AI, that I've been telling you about hypothetically. This may well be one of the conduits, portals, that I've speculated about for some time, which is the main goal of the experiments at CERN. We really are on the precipice of something big that I don't think even the brightest minds at CERN are comprehending much in the way the scientists are using the machine itself. And in addition to this, the story that I told you about, the death of one of CERN's ski club members. One of four members of CERN's ski club went down a mountainside. 49-year-old Frenchman died in Zion Hospital. S-I-O-N. So still Zion. We can always change and ask for Z. Certain spokesman speaking to a news agency of the man's death became known right when it happened. Said scientific organization was shocked by the news of the snow slide. He confirmed that the members of CERN's ski club were victims of a sudden avalanche on the north side of a 3,026 meter mountain. The other person critically injured, 33-year-old Swiss man who lives in the canton of Geneva. The man who died was a senior member of CERN's engineering department. Police said that the avalanche triggered on Sunday occurred as the five members of the club were ski touring. If this gentleman had passed in a plane crash, the alternative media would have been shouting foul play, right? So I'm wondering if there's way more to this story than meets the eye, especially when we look at the language and the numbers contained in this story itself. Firstly, Look at the hospital where the man died, Zion. A Friday. Doesn't sound like a little Ziony. New Jerusalem in a location where they are recreating the conditions immediately after the Big Bang. Just saying. And there's the darn numbers again. Honestly, I think numerology will drive me friggin' insane. But let's take a look. We have the magic. 
and it seems my personal number says the number 33. Then further down in the story, we find it all took place at 11 a.m. So we have 11 again. So nothing to see here, right? I'll let you decide. But bear in mind that I've told you about CERN. And there are many videos and links about these things. So, a vacuum tube. We need to go into some old alchemy here. We will go back to something we talked about before. The occult history of the television set, of your computer, the vortex trap, and the air traps. And a certain alchemical process called the acetate path. The origin of the television heavily shrouded in both spiritualism and the occult. Its very name implies the television was first conceived as a technical device for seeing at a distance, like the telephone, speaking at a distance, the telescope, viewing at a distance. Television was intended as a magical box through which we watch distant events unfold, a kind of technological crystal ball. And I told you who set up the news and the media and all of the entertainment that you're viewing worldwide right now. This again, Alistair Crowley and the OTO. Now we go back as far as weird renaissance experiments involving technology and induced illusions such as concave mirrors, magic lanterns, disorientating walls of smoke, and other ghostly apparitions, and the whole phantasmagoria projections that I've told you about, created by specifically devices. These are conjuring tricks, but they rely on pretty sophisticated understandings of such basic things as light and shadow and acoustics and making an audience see and believe in an illusion. What's central here is that these devices included instruments specifically designed for pursuing supernatural research. That's why it's a problem for me that this thing is in a tube. And all of the things that I've told you the CERN scientists say they are doing. And by the way, the catastrophic problem that I predicted about CERN is happening. They can't cool this thing down even though they say they're not running experiments right now. It cannot be shut down. If they shut it down, they lose containment. And what I was telling you on, on Mona's show yesterday, again, thank you very much for inviting me down, is these beings are manifesting. And we have all the devices all around us to contact them, which I think I did. Yeah, I think I met the 200. Angels, aliens, demons, Mount of Hermon, things going on right now in Area 51, the Jade Helm, all of these things, my friends, linking up together, just like I had planned these freaking shows or something. <laughs> I plan, but I am also being driven, in a way, because what do certain events have in common, right? 9-11, World Trade Center, Pentagon, London subway bombings, which, by the way, was 70705. Oklahoma City bombing, the Estonia 
catastrophe that killed 852. The Norway Ozo attacks um, 77 dead. Sandy Hook Elementary School. Aurora, Colorado, the Batman shooting. Taft Union High School. January 10th, 2013. Boston Marathon, April 15th, 2013. Here is the answers. What was common? Same terror drills were conducted. Same scenario. Same day. Either on location or strategically close. The media ignores this completely. They are terror drills that went live. This is no conspiracy here. This is fact. False flags to come. Mass casualty drills. Crisis drills. Disaster drills throughout this continent. And now it's looking worldwide. Know your history. Because the past is always a prologue, my friends. So... Subtle forces at work every day. Devices developed in occult research. Television-like devices invented in the name of spiritualism towards the end. 19th century later played a very incredible, perhaps devastating, role in the emergence of radio television, communication. This is part of a reciprocal interaction between occultism, natural science that characterize the cultural construction of new technology, media, two directional exchange between occultism and technology. We are Wi-Fi now. You are receiving information on your computer or your phone or whatever device you are using. Know that as much as you are receiving, you are sending. Not just with the AI and the search engines, but physically. It is hearing you, seeing you, knowing you. So while the television itself, the living room object, you and I most likely know, might not be what you would think is a supernatural mechanism, it nevertheless depends on and descends from strange convoluted lines of esoteric experimentation including early attempts at controlling electromagnetic transmissions, radio waves, even experiencing various forms of so-called remote viewing. The idea of a medium takes on a double meaning here. It refers to the media in the sense of a professional world of publishing transmission and to the medium in the sense of a person who acts as a psychic or a seer, which you now are. You are. And you are being used as such. The notion of spiritual clairvoyance, very much part of the overall intention of this device. As a matter of fact, it was called a vortex tube. It was rediscovered in 1930. French physicist, once again, Georges Rank. The Vortec, he called it. V-O-R-T-E-C. Vortec. The tech, like Aztec. It's why these words are, are used so much. Okay. Was the first company to develop the phenomenon into a practical, effective cooling solution for industrial application. Here's how it works. Fluid rotates about an axis, like a tornado. This is a vortex. A vortex cube creates a vortex from compressing air 
and separates it into two air streams, one hot, one cold. Compressed air enters a cylindrical generator, which is appropriately large, <laughs> or larger than the hot long tube where it causes the air to rotate. Then the rotating air is forced down an inner wall of the hot tube at very quick speed. At the end of the hot tube, a small portion of this air exits through needle, valve, and exhaust. They lose containment on this bad boy. They need to cool this machine down to otherworldly coolness. The vacuum of space. If it is not contained, this thing gets out. Plain and simple. This thing gets out. Vortex tubes can be used to separate oil from water. When oil and water are spun together in a vortex tube, heavier tends to follow a path of hot air. Right? Being lighter, of course. Follows the cold air path. Exits through a cold air exhaust port. They 100% use these tubes to allow a release. Has to be. Has to be. It's the only explanation. This is a air trap. It's called this. So in my deepest understanding of this, I see the role of the vacuum. The role of the vacuum as an ultimate tyrant is best seen in the work of quantum relativity and cosmologists. It is the vacuum that determines the observed charge on an electron, for example, and other physical constraints. These in turn determine the physics and the chemistry of the material universe and the conditions that life. So biochemistry and physiology works within. Our body is basically a vacuum container. With me? Okay. All biosystems have an essentially close relation to a vacuum. A vacuum is not isotropic, which means that there are structures in the virtual particle flux. I'll get into that. But exploring the close relation with a vacuum, all biosystems achieve changes in the physical universe that on the dead laboratory bench can only be achieved with high energy, like spreading seeds gain more mass, a nuclear process at room temperature, nuclear, atom splitting. It's why they use the word atom. It's why we've heard so many references to, I have become death, destroyer of worlds. It is the separation. Adam and Eve, if you like, or Adamus. When we divide it, we are talking about the division. The original division. With me? I know you guys already have your thinking caps on. Which is a real thing, by the way. It was why teachers, without knowing it, put the dunce cap on. That shape is a witch's hat that actually does make you smarter amongst other things. So we are talking about all of us being used as clairvoyance now. This is a word that literally means clear vision. But that has now come to refer to an almost exclusively to supernatural ability to see things at a distance or even before they happen. We are all trained. 
the moment the televisions were turned on. Because no, we need to think of things in a broader sense. Like meditation, for instance. When you meditate, still your body. Expand your mind. Reach out. It is affecting you where you live, your house members, the very house you live in. It is affecting your building, if you live in a building. All the beings there, seen and unseen. Your street, your town, your province, your country, your continent, your planet. Everything. It's like dropping a tiny pebble. And depending on your strength, this could go on forever. Hit the wall, come right back. This is all of us now. There are no targeted groups. We are all targeted. And we are all participating. We all have Wi-Fi. And if you say, no, Tracy, I don't have it. If your neighbor has it, you have it. If you've ever done a search on the Internet, the AI controlling it knows you, knows things about you, knows your intent, is learning from you. It's learning. So what you do absolutely affects everything else. Television started as maybe an easy metaphor. But it promised clairvoyance in the sense that a TV could allow seeing without interference or noise. It would give the viewers a way to tune into and directly see a broadcast in visible signals as if remote viewing apparatus with forgotten supernatural intentions is now part of nearly every one's home. Sometimes people have more than one TV. Now, we have to realize this means part tomb, part church, Part Planetarium. The cathode ray, a vacuum tube technology found in the earliest television sets, found an unexplained, unexpected, extraordinary use in the work of Gonzo. <laughs> Believe it or not, Norwegian inventor, Berkland. Christian Berkland. Berkland used cathode rays in his attempt to build a domed scale model of the entire solar system. It's worth a quick recap, although, you know, we've talked about it before. Berkland was the first scientist to correctly make a theory about the origins of the Northern Lights. Rightly, the deducing from his own research of electromagnetic phenomenon that the aurora borealis was caused by interactions between charged particles from the sun and the earth's own magnetic field. This produced the wonderful displays of light Berkeley had seen in the planets far north. Now I have told you about the strange lightning effects that are no longer horizontal they're coming vertically in rainbows. Part of our intent is triggering this. This is not just a physical phenomenon that is not sentient. It is sentient. All the northern peoples talk about these as beings. And if you've ever really been around when when what happens, you feel something an intent, a consciousness, an awareness, too, that not only are you looking at it, that it is looking at you. Now, Berkeley 
fell deeper into an eventually fatal addiction to extreme levels of caffeine and slow-acting hypnotic drug called Veronal. He became fixated on more weirdly impossible exact modeling of Northern Lights in miniature. He wanted to make it. But that's what they're doing now. That's why I think CERN is involved with that too. And us. Because we are all transmitters and receivers and we are working for beings we don't really understand. And did they pick mystics to work at CERN even though they're saying they're contacting other dimensions? Are these scientists the ones we want? Saying, hey, <laughs> to the aliens or the angels or the demons or whatever the heck they've just made contact from and are getting information back and are, so are we. But anyway, he was intent, Brooklyn, on producing a kind of astro television set. Like a television like device in his words inner workings would model the electromagnetic secrets of the universe see this is what CERN is doing Berkland drew up plans for a new machine unlike anything that had been made before it, remem it resembled a spacious aquarium with a dome that would act as a window to space as CERN is covered with a dome. He was thinking a box would be pumped out to create a vacuum. Or the box. He called it a box. That's fine. He would use larger globes and more powerful cathodes to produce charged particles. With so much more room, he would be able to see the effects obscured in smaller tubes to make his northern light theory to the next step to complete cosmology a theory of the origins of the universe itself this is what these I say that yes they have absolutely found something they have found the moron particle in the moronic field <laughs> we are forget surrounded by it but it's a multifaceted and extraordinary undertaking that he did. Brooklyn was able to simulate Saturn rings, comet tails, and the odd zodiacal light, and the weird lights that are produced underwater, which shouldn't be produced. Sounds produce them. It's weird. But anyway, he experimented with space propulsion using cathode rays. He was making a device that not only produced something but it. He wanted it to be able to transport through space and time. And sophisticated photographs have been taken of his simulations that are included in Berkeley's great work which would discern the electromagnetic nature of the universe, his theories about the formation of the solar system, and how it produces rainbow lights. But this was by no means the end of Berkeley's television. His ultimate goal, he said, devised while having a near-death experience in a hotel room in Egypt, stoned out of his face, one would say. He did, though, get up. This is what he wanted to, anyway. He wanted to construct a vacuum chamber partially excavated into solid rock of a mountain peak and the same mixture of a tomb and a church and a planetarium. The result cathedral-like space. Think of it as an immense landscape, landscape-scale television set carved directly into bedrock. And it would thus be an artificial cavern 
inside of which flickering electromagnetic mirages of stars and planets and comets and aurorae would spiral and glow for a hypnotized audience. Brooklyn wrote about this astonishing plan in a letter to a friend. He was clearly excited about what he called the great idea I've had. It would be, and the emphasis is, a museum for the discovery of the Earth's magnetism, the magnetic storms, the nature of sunspots, of planets, their nature, and their very creation. He described, and his description is worth quoting at length. You can almost feel the caffeine working, and a little bit stony stone. On a little hill, he described, perhaps with the image of pyramids embossed on the letterhead reminding him of the ambitions of pharaohs, I will build a dome of granite and the walls will be a meter thick, and the floor will be formed of mountain itself. And the top of the dome, 14 meters in diameter, will be gilded, copper, sphere. Can you guess what the dome will cover? When I am boasting, I say to friends, next to God, I have the greatest vacuum chamber in the world. I will make a vacuum chamber of a thousand cubic meters and every Sunday people will have the opportunity to see the ring of Saturn ten meters in diameter sunspots like no one else can do better so the acolyte as evocative as natural ones finally auroras four meters in diameter in the same sphere will serve as Saturn the Sun and the Earth will be driven around by a motor. Every Sunday, as if attending Mass, congregations of this artificial solar system will hike into the immense television of Berkeley's strange astronomy, hypnotized by its explosive worlds of electromagnetic wonder. Do you feel the caffeine there? I feel like I just got a jolt. Seen in the context of occult mechanisms, psychic TVs, clairvoyant media technologies, Brooklyn's story reveals just one particular momental take on the otherworldly realities, not possibilities here, realities of television, televirtual media bypassing the supernatural altogether to focus on something although more extreme direct visual engagement with the natter the nega, the nature itself in all its blazing detail now of course Birkeland's cathode ray model of the solar system might not have conjured ghosts or visuals visualize the spiritual energies but it did bring the heavens to earth in the form of a thousand meter television set particularly and partially hewn from raw granite who has amazing properties in itself the most awesome TV ever attempted a domed and never realized invention that nonetheless puts all of TV in today's visual media to shame until we look at CERN again. This is CERN. That's what they made. That's what they made. Now think of this. Think of this. This is an Ormeus drop. It coheres the vacuum. Sometimes very well, sometimes not at all. According to design and materials, I suggest timing has something to do with it too. The work, though, that is being done here. <laughs> 
is incredible. They have made a biosystem. They have made his design. So I'm thinking along the lines that the full moon eclipse is essentially a gravitational issue, not lunar um, reflected EM light. You can collect white matter indoors and actual moonlight from water vortex tubes as well as dew collectors. Ormius is also responsive to magnetic fields as well. So what they've called a vor trap design itself makes use of these things. We have two energy systems, gravitational and magnetic fields, that are carriers of Ormius, bringing Ormius in and out of the strictly physical world. In gravity, when the sun and the moon and the earth line up, there is more salt in the dew. This is proven. In astrological terms, two poles, sun and moon, are in equilibrium. In magnetic field, Armius stabilizes a magnetic field vacuum. In all magnetically shielded vessels, like the ones we are living in right now, our body. But as above, so below, this is how everything works. <laughs> this breakdown of magnetic field and polarity that we usually see experiments on has just become serious. Okay, everyone, time for a break. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Turtle Island News with Tracy Kennedy. Hope that wasn't too much. I'm sure you guys are following me. You rock so much. Now, before I move on in a vacuum tube, know that one vacuum tube affects another vacuum tube. When something happens in one, the other one reacts like it's happening in it. I've told you before that the scientists they picked are interesting. And they're like each one is a representation or representative of their race, their region, their the place, right? That they're from. So know that whatever's going on there affecting them is affecting you. So my brothers and sisters out there, when you've been seeing things and we've talked these past couple months about the veil slipping, you are not imagining things. There's a difference between visions, hallucinations, and dreams. You can have a waking dream, yes. The difference is, when it is a vision, you can't stop it. When you are having a vision during dream time, you can't stop it. You must see it. It's calling you. This is what they're doing. With me? Okay. So. We need to talk about the acetate path. It is one of the methods employed by alchemists ancient and it looks like modern to obtain soul or sulfur and spirit mercury of metals and minerals when there are certain alignments there's always more salt salt that you create in your body so it is made up of everything available in space and this earth the acetate path was made public by most past alchemists, such as Isaac um, Lundas. Oh, hold on. I think someone's trying to call. Oh, greetings. What is your name and where are you calling from? 
I think I have the wrong number, Tori. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway. That was a strange long distance call. Wrong number. I just got the creeps. Goosebumps all over my body. Okay, anyways, moving on. <laughs> anyway. Isaac Hollandus, in his work on Saturn, and of course many others, it's considered a viable path and an option for obtaining sulfur of metals. Soul energy. So, to make something non-living alive, part of it, and to also make something manifest. This is a trial by fire. So, remember that these processes are created and employed with recognition to the matter in use. Metal, for instance as containing the same principles that all life embodies, namely soul and spirit. These metals contained consciousness. This process was one of many that was used within all the alchemical or the Altec laboratories to work with and actually bring about sentience. Now whether or not they are breathing life in, as in necromancy into the dead well this is kind of necromancy guys to begin the extraction of soul and spirit of a stone or metal it is first necessary to secure a source of ore. Traditionally, raw ore was taken from a pure metal that could be smelted up. The smelting process, well, I'm not going to elaborate on this. You can look. So I'm going to skip ahead. So just say we have a pure metal. Once the metal is obtained, it is ground down to a fine powder. This powder can be placed in a cast iron pan, set over fire to oxidize, but this has enough energy to do that. Exposure to the elements and various other methods employed by alchemists to obtain an oxide. The oxidation of any material is essentially the burning of that substance. The ultimate goal is to let your matter burn, be killed to obtain an oxidized form or dead body. In this philosophy, the body, or metal in this case, to be killed and turned inside out so that the spirit and the soul of a given metal could be captured and used for whatever purpose the alchemist has thought. This is this killing is always done in the fire. Version of this metal was considered a dead body, which is from which its spirit and soul can be resurrected. After the philosophical killing of the metal, the dead body would be awakened, brought back to life. This is done using specially crafted tools, like, I don't know, television, which are essentially the spirits of other metals or minerals or plants. It's an actual process. The next part and this can be done with so many different things. It's, I'm using this because it's what we need to do in our practice to cleanse ourselves, to be protected from certain things. But it's also what they're doing 
for God knows what all over the world and they've used their energy to do it is not just an expensive machine they have built when ready though the alchemist then takes this digested solution usually some acetate and dissolves it to get a highly concentrated version of the acetate solution the concentrate solution is taken outside to evaporate slowly to remove the remaining liquid to hold it in solution solution is placed in a glass dish heated over an element gently heated allowed to evaporate in the sun over the course of a few days the liquid evaporates making a pure and dry crystals of an acetate. Once dry the crystals are dissolved usually in distilled water filtered placed back into a glass dish to evaporate off the moisture again. This is a process of washing that removes any residual corrosive material. It's a step that of washing that is repeated multiple times to achieve a highly purified crystal. This is the breath of life process. And then comes the preparation for rebirth. Once dried and washed crystals are secured, can be crushed. They dissolve it in something. Then it rises out of the ashes like a phoenix. How many phoenix references have we had this year? A hundred? A thousand? You know, there. All of the things that I've been talking to you about recently absolutely are pointing to an event. An event of some kind that's about to take place. That Hold on. It does mean something. <laughs> You know, we we talk about these things, and 2015 seems to be, I don't know, an interesting year? Interesting as in foretold over and over again about a certain event taking place in this year. We're talking about the letters of transit here. I want to read you a little something. And you'll laugh, though. It's from Fringe. Remember that show? Season 4, Episode 19. Let me read to you. They came from the future. At first, they only watched, arriving at key moments in human history. We called them observers. But in 2015, they stopped watching and ceased control. Citizen uprisings proved bloody and futile. Those who survived became known as natives. In an attempt to show their alliance, some native factions became loyalists and were marked by the observers. Marked for favor, of course. The original Fringe team fought the evasion, was quickly defeated. Fringe division was allowed to continue at reduced capacity, but only to police the natives. The resistance was quickly overcome. Why so many things pointing to this year? And again, have you ever wondered how your computer works? fascinating, mysterious. All you do is type or point and click 
and inside a million little things happen and stuff appears on the stream on your screen how the machines the first computers were machines punch cards vacuum tubes big rooms filled with wires they did math high speed they counted things they sorted records but that was about it a long way from modern computers even the calculators that we no longer need because today computers are no longer machines they are magic it is a magic box filled with ceremonial components that traps little beings spirits some are working with you some may not be and it's true your computer appliance well it may look like an appliance in many ways you plug it in it's roughly box shaped well the similarity to other appliances in your house stops there doesn't it computers are marketed as machines there are many people who base their whole careers around supporting that claim machine however complex it may be is something that you can break down into its component parts if you're smart enough until you can actually understand how it works from the ground up it's not so with computers many computer experts will claim they understand how computer works but if you ask one to explain it to you they will tell you something like this key point to understand how computer works is the concept of abstraction there are multiple of layers of functionality that are based upon each other like bricks in a tower semiconductors are etched and treated well doped basically to form circuits that redirect electrons in specific patterns these circuits are packaged as AS well as SIC ASIC and microprocessors called chips and interacted by buses and traces on a PCB called the motherboard in order to implement machine code then other PCBs which are designed to comply to some physical interface standard are inserted into the motherboard where the processor can interact with them these boards are managed by a set of machine codes called device drivers which run in specifically privileged execution mode kernels rings such things designed to allow the OS to manage these then there's other blocks of machine code called applications and processes run on your system and call the OS API in order to use the system devices the OS turns processing each request to share devices multiple computers are connected across large networks to share processing and data and centralized software components on a server they process remote they process remote requests in this way each layer provides a service to the layer b above and below to make an amazing machine we call a PC see he has no idea but his job depends on people thinking he knows what the heck he just told you <laughs> so magic then when you look at your computer honestly and accept the fact that it's magic everything else 
becomes easier to understand. It's no longer necessary to be well educated about your computer. You don't have to take classes, you don't have to buy books, you don't even need to be computer literate. With proper attitude, anyone can use, maintain, and even repair a computer. Just bear these principles in mind. The core of a computer is a trapped spirit. Is it a coincidence that Unix and GNU Linux processes, processors are called demons? This imp imprisoned in your computer as punishment for something it did in another world? Generally speaking, the more evil the imp is, the faster the computer is. Lesser ghosts and hobgoblins that in inhabit the expansion cards, peripherals of your computer. These evil spirits are trapped within the hard core of your computer. Take a screwdriver, open up your computer, take a look at the cir circuit boards. They are green. They are covered with complex patterns of thin copper lines. These are circuit runes, written in arcane and ancient languages that describe the magic spells that bind the imps to the chips. Be careful with these circuits. If you scratch off even the tiniest bit of the runes, the spell will be broken, the imp escapes. Also note the serial and the parts numbers printed on these boards, the exact identity of what sort of spirit lives there in case you ever have to order a replacement from the factory and your computer hates you when you hit the keys on the keyboard or click the mouse little silver needles jab that imp force him to do what you want your computer And this probing only makes it more angry. As you use the computer, the imp becomes more and more angry, generating heat. This is why your computer contains one or more cooling fans. Without them, the imp will turn the box into a raging inferno. And frequently, your computer will crash. It will lock up. It will lose files. Or do another or any number of little things to annoy you personally. This is just the imp's way of saying F you. Don't stand for it. <laughs> Leave it unplugged for a while. So starve it. Disconnect the monitor. Blind it. Sometimes it is even necessary to delete files that are important to it just to get it back for deleting your files. Take that, you little imp. Funny? Strange? When you don't think you're alone in the universe you realize that it's not possible for us to be alone. We are all occulted. This is theosophy. This is occult chemistry and physics. Even Tesla, believe it or not, talked about this. Did he discover the secrets to anti-gravity or was he working on something altogether different? Occult ether physics. That's what I'm thinking. Tesla has been credited for the creation of much of the technology that we take for granted. His genius and without it we would not have radio or television or AC electricity or the coil
Tesla coil, fluorescent lighting, neon lighting, radio control devices, robotics. Well, robotics we'd have because we had that before. Actually, all of the things he's credited for, even x-rays, radar, microwaves, dozens of other amazing inventions, he said he got from either the either or older tech. But it was not surprising to me that he also delved in to much deeper esoteric ideas. And that man's greatest achievement would be corrupted. He knew this. When a child is born, its sense organs are brought into contact with the outer world. Waves of sound and heat and light beat upon its young body. Sensitive nerve fibers quiver. Muscles contract and relax in obedience to a pre-programmed set of circumstances. That's what we come into with. Already loaded. A gasp, a breath. And in this act, a marvelous little engine. Inconceivable delicacy, complex this construction, unlike much of Earth. We are hitched to the wheelwork of the universe itself. And we are not alone here. So they have turned us all to clairvoyance. Can we just say that? This was the plan, you know, right from the beginning. Always to build that machine that they have built and see what freaking happens. <laughs> the importance of this is huge. Dealing with phases of research. Occult. Us, the occulted student, which we are now, like it or not. I think we start realizing how enormous this moment is. that has been started so long ago for us to reach this specific time the specific date to go over some things that we have been lied to about and the interconnectedness of all things of course these demonic I use the word lightly of course because We'll never really know the full plan. We can't conceive it. We're not that sick. You need to be really, really sick to understand these beings. Other characteristics of tubes and glows. And this occult physics and chemistry and all of the things we're looking at. Electrons, protons, neutrons, morons, <laughs> vacuum tubes, the impact of electric atoms. We are the electric atom. Us, boys and girls, all of us, in the process of all this ordinary research, I guess, discovery of radium by Madame Curie, entirely new face on the subject of electrons, beta particles remaining from radium, 
were identified as the electrons of the cathode ray. Followed the discovery that the gas, helium, previously treated as another element, evolved itself as a coincidence of integration and with disintegration, really, of radium. Transmutation. Till then, laughed at as superstition, as alchemy passed quietly into the realms of accepted natural per phenomenon. But this is still transmutation, no matter how they want to or do not want to look at it. The chemical elements, soothed seen to be bodies built up of electrons in various numbers, probably varying arrangements. So at last, ordinary science has reached an important result of occult research. It has not quite yet reached the finer results of occult research, the structure, the understanding, the ether of space. There is no science that we're using now that is not started by occultism. And this ether, though defying instruments and experimentation, comes in the scope of clairvoyance and clairvoyant faculty, profound, profoundly interesting discoveries that were made during what I have called the early research in connection with occultism, etheric atoms combined to form molecules in different ways, but combinations involving fewer atoms, varieties, occult physics as as important as the present day occult chemistry. <sighs> what is in the tube? <laughs> what have they done this time? Seriously. What have they done this time to us? Because know that everything else is affecting you, right? It affects you. It affects you very much. The people they picked for these experiments, most likely because they can trigger you. But being aware of what's going on is our saving grace. There are rituals of protection used all over the world. Shamans, if you like. All over the world. Burning sage. Um, using crystals, magic chants, mudras, mantras. Let's break it down here. And if we have time, I'll tell you what they've triggered. It doesn't matter what ritual you do. The most important thing is that you are emotionally connected to it. If you choose to burn a sage or mix yourself in alchemical drink, know that even the active states of taking a plant, for instance, that alters your perspective on things. The most important thing about this is that you emotionally connect and you become the ritual. They all do the same thing. Whether they're whipping themselves up into a frenzy and dance, it is to take yourself outside of your body so that you no longer 
connect in the same way. You don't have to leave your body per se. You have to become the ritual you're doing. It's not enough to sit quietly. You have to become the silence so that what is around you and happening cannot harm you, cannot touch you. You go into yourself, you become the sky. You are the sky, vast, open, aware. It's not enough to see that there is a sky. It's not enough to watch the sage burn. Feel yourself burning. This is the alchemical process I just told you about. Burn yourself. The things you do not need. I know it sounds scary. It sounds weird. But until you connect emotionally and take it personally and feel it's happening to you, you can do rituals all day long. You can do a lotus position. You can take your leg and wrap it around your neck. You can burn and chant and jump up and down like a crazy monkey. It means nothing. One moment of passion is all you'll ever need. Truly. Becoming the thing inside you. Being the being that you truly are is the best protection we will ever have. Protection from everything. For everything. It is what you truly are. Become what you truly are and be unafraid of these things. We have been lied to so much. Baby's outside. Oh, sweetie. Cain. Again. First son of Adam and Eve, allegedly. First human conceived the way that we are now conceived. First murderer. Victim is Brother Abel. The first human to die. For his deed, Cain was exiled. And he flees to the land of Nod. Abel has no... Well... No one else. There's no line. Cain apparently never makes it past the flood of Noah. All humans alive today are descendant of Adam and Eve's number three, Seth. Bear in mind that the religions of the Sethites always made lavish use of music especially in the olden days, had tents for sanctuaries, patriarchs, both tent-dwelling, music-making, are held by the descendants of Cain, too. In Greek, the New Testament, Cain is spelled, um, but it's really hard to say, but it's from a Hebrew word that means spear, coming from the root cluster. Two words, basically. Q-Y-N, queen. Also the root, kana. One root, queenin. One root, takin. It appears to be related both form and meaning in none of the consulted sources hints at this perhaps a relationship between the six root words here don't formally exist but there's where I get the queen from Cain the root word Kana 
means to acquire. It also means to create. The regular verb for commerce and purchase. It extends to all the financed redemption of slaves. It's probably this line that describes God as redeeming Israel from Egypt. Small instances of this verb meaning to create. The verb also exclaimed by Eve when she says, I have gotten made a man child with the Lord. Interesting term. Derivatives of this word masculine noun Cain Quaya means something acquired or created or creatures. Also masculine noun meaning cattle. Feminine noun meaning purchase or purchase price. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> you, mean, you may have noticed. <laughs> not a big fan of this guy here. When we look at all the things that we have gone through as a people. And you know the only thing that they teach us in school is about death and killing. And this group of people killed these groups of people. And those groups of people stood up and started killing these other people. But they were they were more righteous in their killings than the others. No. It's never right. It's never okay. And we know that. I think it comes down to a corruption of what we know is true and what is good in this world. I do not believe in the inherent badness of us as a people. I believe bad things happen. I do. I absolutely do. And we've been lied to so much, it's hard for us to sort things out. But I want you to take a look. And one of the earliest corruptions most Christians, my brothers and sisters, have no clue why their patriarch Moses is depicted so many times with horns. Common sense is not that common when we've been lied to so much, but I'm telling you that your soul depends on it. Look at the images of Cain. Why does he have horns? Couldn't be that this Cain is the horn god. Could it? Couldn't be that he was taken from so many other references. Could it? Sexual. Strange. Horn. Horny. Janice. All of these things, you know. We're seeing the exact same thing played out over and over and over again. These lies that took our original belief, our original ways, and corrupted them into something sick and twisted. I recommend for everyone to watch, if you get a chance, The Name of the Rose. It talks about the corruption that I've talked to you about. Of the guys who actually did it. Now, of course, it's a show. It's a movie. It's meant to entertain you. But it's one, I'm telling you, shocks me that it got out. We are seeing... 
the unsettled remains of our ancient people. We are seeing how things are stolen and no knowledge of the originators then there is no knowledge to our point of entry some more pictures in this one that I just put up the first image or the first corruption perhaps one of them when Pythagoras himself attempt to deify himself after falsifying all the Kemetan knowledge for his own, he tries to re-image himself as her M. Akhet Sphinx and Horus. Christianity thus begins. Only so long as this false brotherhood is allowed to continue these lies. will we be used against each other? They have crossed the rose line. That's what this is about too. Alignments and dates. What was the term? Principles and principalities. We fight against something so sick and so twisted that is I realize why so many people feel low right now. Look at these things as a virus. We already know that Ebola is a virus. It is not nanotechnology. How they work. There are programmable viruses out there. There are patents. There may be that thing inside that tube. Viruses are non-living microscopic particles. That's why I mentioned the necromancy. And there are very many ways of corrupting your DNA. EMF, vaccines, never ending amount of GM foods and viruses artificial nanotechnology created especially for this purpose they attack healthy cells within living things they do not have the characteristics of living things and are not able to metabolize food metabolize means to change food energy into a chemical energy that a body can use. Viruses are not alive. So they do not have a need for food like we do or any living organism. Viruses do not have an organized cell structure. They are so light that they can float in air or water, be phased and passed on to other organisms even if touched they fit anywhere. Viruses invade the cells of both plants and animals. They produce and reproduce inside healthy cells, causing diseases almost impossible to treat. Viruses cannot reproduce by themselves, like a bacteria or a cell. They attach themselves to a cell membrane of an animal or cell wall of a plant and inject part of their DNA into the cell of the host organism. These are what I call the parasites. Just because they are small does not mean they are weak. They do this by using a hollow tube structure. Like, oh, I don't know. The tubes I've been telling you about. That punctures the cell wall a membrane and they pass its DNA into this cell, this new virus. These cells are incubated inside an invasive cell. They are injected. The virus DNA reproduces itself inside this cell. It uses natural process of osmosis to leave the cell. New viruses cells attach to other healthy cells and infect them. There are no antibiotics. There are no medicines. 
known to kill them. And it looks like digital life is already inside your computer. Why would they call it a virus? Why? We are seeing self-replicating synthetic bacterial but more virus cells already. There, we are told that these are to just you know, it's going to be good, you can live forever, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, but I'm not seeing the awesomeness in their technology, so you guys, I'm feeling a little less awesomeness from these guys. So what you're seeing is real. We can prepare our house. Know that it's not another temple that's going to be made. It's a temple you're making yourself. And you absolutely can fix yourself. Right now. If I can do it, you can do it. There will be more and more false flag events. Because there always are, right? We've seen the signs. They've been pointing to this year. They're pointing to September. We know that in the grassy narrows, mercury levels are rising beyond belief. We know that there's flesh-eating bacteria in our waters. We know, for a fact, that the 500th person killed by police in 2015 was a 69 year old suicidal man but 15 more were killed by the Tuesday of that week so as of Sunday Sunday the look at the date here I think it was this Sunday that just passed. 515 people were killed by police. Another suicide by cop, perhaps. The 500th. We are not like this, people. It is a virus. It's an infection. We're strong enough to fight this by looking this monster in the face. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, love you guys. Um, respect you. Be cocksucked.